Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ, with daily insight on the NASDAQ 100 Index, or the NDX, which is made up of 100 of the largest domestic and international non-financial innovative companies listed on NASDAQ. The NDX has been the barometer for U.S. large cap growth, and also one of the best performing indexes over the last decade and a half, not to mention one of the most liquid index ecosystems in the world. Joining me this Wednesday afternoon, we have Nick Kalivas, Head Factor and Core Equity Product Strategist, to discuss NASDAQ 100 weekly performance. Nick, it's great to see you as always. Let's take a look at your first couple of charts that detail weekly performance in the NASDAQ 100 and attribution. Yeah, sure, Jill. Thanks. Um, yeah, it was a good week for the, the, the NASDAQ, uh, the QQQ. Um, it was able to outperform the S&P by about 60 basis points, up uh, 0.57. Uh, percent for the week. It did outperform the small cap Russell 2000 by 48 basis points. And it was, of course, a holiday type of uh, atmosphere. Uh, there was um, kind of a small gains uh, earlier in the week on a relative basis for QQQ. And then later in the week, as some corporate news broke and the, the macro data, the jobs data and the ISM number came out, we saw uh, Q show relative strength and the small cap kind of uh, a dip back. And that was really, I think, the, the key driver of the trades is those weaker than expected uh, labor numbers, the, the slowdown in the ISM service number. And then uh, at the macro uh, perspective, uh, the chemical maker PPG basically had a bit of weak guidance, which uh, sent a little bit of a shockwave through some of the cyclical stocks and created some rotation into the more growthy names. And then on top of that, as we get into a little bit later, uh, there was some good news for uh, the Q holdings that, that were present. And, uh, if you go ahead. And you know, it's interesting if we take a look at your next couple of charts here, to your point, you can see that the heavyweights within the NASDAQ 100 really did that um, outperformance that we saw there. Meanwhile, the detractors were kind of not quite as much of the heavyweight makeup. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. When you dive into that, that attribution, uh, you can see that you know, selection and consumer discretionary, the overweight in technology, the lack of exposure to financials, the, the underweight to industrials, the underweight to materials, those all those things really uh, played out in terms of, of driving the outperformance. You know, the financials kind of struggled a bit with kind of lingering concerns over profitability and, and credit cards. Uh, Wells Fargo had some issues with some, some lingering regulatory uh, dynamics. We saw the PPG guidance uh, come out, and uh, QQQ doesn't have exposure in those areas, so it, it played uh, very well uh, in terms of performance. It certainly did. And with that, let's take a look at the stocks that did outperform and those that detracted from performance. We can see where that heavyweight uh, tech comes into play. Yeah, I mean, it was a great week for, for Apple. It, it, it was uh, the number one contributor to performance. It, you know, broke out above the July August. Very strong momentum, you know, expectations for kind of the new product launches, the, 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 the new Watch Series 7, uh, the, the iPhone device event that's on September 14th, really uh, helped drive interest in that stock. Uh, Netflix broke out above the higher end of its trading range, which has really been present since June of 2020. A lot of excitement over uh, entrance into the gaming area, a lot of excitement over some of the new content, and then pricing power. Uh, and then uh, you did see uh, Moderna make a little bit of a, of a comeback uh, after some, some, some weakness there. And I think the market had been looking, looking ahead a little bit to uh, maybe some, uh, some comments by uh, President Biden coming up here about uh, uh, measures to reduce COVID, and then some of the concerns over the, uh, the bad batch of vaccines in Japan seem to fade. And where did you see some weakness? So, so if you go on the weakness side, really what, what's a little bit interesting was, was Microsoft was a little bit weak. Now, what, what I thought was interesting is there wasn't, it wasn't a big decline in Microsoft. Um, it's just the, the big weight and the, and the down week seemed to create the pressure. Uh, I think maybe there were some psychological negatives from the, uh, the about $18 million worth of shares. Uh, Honeywell was, was clearly weak. And this goes back into why I brought up uh, PPG with you know, the chemical maker guiding down. It just had a negative effect on a lot of the industrials and cyclicals. And you know, Honeywell kind of fits into uh, that, that category on the, on the fear of kind of supply chain disruption. 
Uh, Autodesk, uh, you know, suffering uh, from some weak cash flow guidance. Some of the analysts came in there, uh, cut the uh, the price target, and and that seemed to weigh also. And to wrap up here, as we start to think about earnings season towards the end of the month, really kicks in uh, at the beginning of October and going through that month. What's your thoughts in, uh, with the earnings backdrop? Yeah, so the earnings backdrop. I mean, as you can see in that that chart, you know, you can you can see that earnings estimates continue to rise, and not only are the estimates rising, but the, but the levels are, are very high. And you know, if you look at the NASDAQ earnings uh, for 2022, expected to be up 10.7%, uh, 2023, 11.7%. So not only do you have a good expectation for 2022, but also looking into 2023. And um, you know, that's really resonating with investors who are, are looking for growth. They're worried about maybe peak economic growth and the potential for, for slower growth. And so they're flocking into these companies that can, can generate growth. And it's also giving uh, the NASDAQ 100 an edge over the S&P 500 because S&P 500 earnings, which, which are not shown in that graphic, they're just growing at a slower rate, about 8.7 for 2022, 9.8 for 2023. Not bad, but just not as, as, as strong. And, and people like to go where, where kind of that earning strength and action is. All right, Nick, great insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.